Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me. Not long after my last episode where I was chasing the moon, as you can see here, and I was thwarted by the clouds. But while I was in the area, and I'm just before sunset, with clear skies on the western horizon and some clouds as well that were on the eastern horizon, I said I'd take the opportunity to come shoot an area that I've been to a number of times before. In fact, the last time I was here, actually, if you've watched that episode, I had some pretty wild conditions and some beautiful light as well coming behind you um, not so rough actually you know today I'm um, quite calm not the same conditions either the Sun is in a completely different position but um, I'm going to come here to get some shots of the lighthouse there's some nice movements on the rocks and nice movements as well on the water so I'm hoping that I can get kind of a traditional seascape uh, type of photograph here today I'm going to use my uh, standard 16 to 35 as well for today. And it's going to be pretty much standard uh, seascape. So I'm just gonna get set up anyway here, um, find the composition with the rocks that are below me here and get some movement as well that's in the water. And hopefully I'll get some nice light and some nice shots as well to end what has been a kind of a, an interesting but frustrating day uh, nonetheless. So yeah, let's go and see how we get on today. I'm putting on now my graduated filters because I want to be able to control the light in the sky and still get a long enough exposure to be able to capture the movement that's in the water here below me. Um, I'm using a 0.9 ND and what I'm going to do is bring my exposure time up to my preferred time which is around about a half a second. So I'm going to change my aperture as well, just what I need to do to be able to get that at the most optimum speed that it needs to be. And using my histogram as well, it will tell me what have I got and what can I play with. So at the moment it's telling me around about an F8 actually is a good uh, aperture to be at. And now once the water comes in with like that, I'm going to just take some shots here, play around then as well and try and capture some movement as the water will break over the rocks that you see here before me. I'm at 35 mil as well, so I'm zoomed right in. I don't want to go too close to the water. Um, this is my tripod that I don't bring to the coast, so I don't really want to get it destroyed in salt water. It's not going to do much damage to it, but I've been good to it since I got it, so I don't want to uh, ruin that or change that. But I think that if we get some nice light, hopefully, you know, the sun, I think, is just dipping now, but if we get some nice light and movement in the water, like right now, I should get some nice shots. And it's a matter of really, you know, spray or pray and spray or spray and pay spray and pray rather because as the waves will break here every single one of them is unique and you know that's what i love about seascape photography every single photograph that you get with the movement of the water is going to be different so i'm going to keep watching here keep waiting and now as well with that moon that i missed earlier and um, that now is above the lighthouse so it'll be quite small because i'm on my uh, wide lens but it's not going to be very dominant in the screen but it should be still nice to have that as well above the lighthouse. So try and make good for what was a challenging shoot earlier on. So yeah, going to wait here, wait for these waves, and I'll check back in again in a moment if I get something interesting.
interestingly enough now actually I had to move my exposure time from my preferred half a second to actually a quarter of a second because with the half a second I think I was getting a bit too much movement in the water now by reducing it down to a quarter of a second I'm at f8 my ISO is at 100 and I'm focused just on the rocks that are just below me here and I've also changed my composition from portrait to landscape I originally started off on uh, portrait but the black rocks that were below me here were too dominant within the screen so by changing that to a landscape I cut out all of these darkness that's here below me and I just have then the movement of the water and I can still get the moon which is directly above the lighthouse as well here in the frame um, it's definitely going to be a, a nice night I think the clouds that thwarted me earlier on miraculously have now just <laughs> disappeared but um, with the moon that's there, I think it adds a nice bit of interest uh, to the image anyway. And hopefully, like right now, I'll get some nice movement in these uh, water as it comes across these rocks. There are periodically as well some nice waves. And hopefully I'll get one that will kind of lead up towards the lighthouse. So you'll get it breaking in the rocks below me. And then it should lead up as well to the lighthouse with the moon sitting on the top. I have to be careful as well of my exposure time. With the uh, ND grad, it is controlling the sky, which is helping to not have the moon blown out because quarter of a second okay it's relatively fast but it's not very very slow at the same point so um, you'll end up getting that blown out in the highlights and I want to be able to keep the details within the moon also so I don't want that to have be blown out so that is the brightest point that's within my image so I'm exposing for that and hopefully then I'll be able to get some of the details out in the rocks below me here and with the water as well flowing over them. Now the advantage of shooting the moon as well at a time like this is you get the residual light from sunset and you get the belt of Venus so you get a nice bit of a pink that's around the uh, horizon within the sky and the moon then was just sitting as well, as well in that so I think it gave a nice photograph. It's getting quite bright in the sky now as well so I just have to be super conscious that I'm not blowing out that within the image but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take one frame specifically for the moon and the sky so at least I have that in case I do get a shot that I like with movement in the water that at least I'll be able to blend an image then with a perfectly exposed moon which is sitting nicely now directly above the lighthouse. Um, settings wise as well I'm having to change it now as well because the light is fading so I can actually get up now to my half a second if need be but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stick with the one quarter of a second and I'm going to change my um, aperture that will allow more light that's going to come in and then I can keep that speed that I need for the water rather than me increase the shutter speed um, to be able to get more light in I can just open up the aperture and I'll be able to get more now this is a big one here so I'm going to take this one and hopefully I'll get some nice movement as well now on the water all around that as it breaks in and it flows in then over the rocks below me I think it should give a dif different shot anyway I'm just taking shot after shot after shot and then I can look at the images when I get back to base and then pick out the best one that I think suits the scene. As the light has faded now I've decided to do something completely different so I put on two graduated NDs but I actually brought them all the way down to cover pretty much all of 
the lens and that's allowing me to get a long exposure now i'm getting a 30 second exposure at the moment i'm at f11 i think yes and then what i've done is i'm just getting all of the island that the lighthouse is in and then the moon as well as sitting above that now the moon is more likely going to be overexposed because for the longer exposure that's not going to be able to contain that so like on the last one here i'll take one quick frame where i have the moon now as well that's perfectly exposed and then i can blend that later and hopefully then that will work out to be a longer exposure within the actual frame here on the widest that i can go on my lens so yeah i think it's a nice shot i'm going to take another one even now just to be safe and then I'll take that one shot also just to make sure I capture that moon as I mentioned. Yeah, definitely interesting actually to try the longer exposure shot here um, i might take another one as well actually looking back up that way um, because what i did was i switched out lens as well and i put on my long lens and took a couple of handheld shots looking towards the west where i get a bit of color that's within the sky but there's some nice textures in the rocks that are here and i have taken a long exposure shot actually of this area before because there's some steps that go down to the rocks that are below me here as well also but yeah i'm going to take that shot I'm actually going to finish up this episode now as well. Thank you very, very much for joining me, as always. Hope you've enjoyed coming along on this quick adventure to Valley Cotton Lighthouse. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, Schlange Fall.